awesome. Yeah, you can really be able to have that predictability and anticipate your customer's behavior before before it happens. It's a it's a great differentiator by for, for Kiss. And what what would you say to um, you know a person your personal branding company before you started uh, Chris Egg or, or when you're at your agency? Moving from a personal branding type of such a scenario to you know a SaaS revenue model, how how would you do that? Would you be creating minimal viable products? How would you really figure out how to spend more money into that SaaS model? So you're saying, how do you figure out how to make money from SaaS, or what's this? Yeah, this big question. If you're uh, experimenting <laughs> with putting out uh, minimal viable products. And, you know, you're getting feedback, you're going through the whole lean process. Is there any best uh, tips that you can give people who are creating SaaS products? First is hit product market fit. So you create your minimal viable product. Once you have product market fit, you can look it up. Sean Ellis talks a lot about it. Once you hit that, then from there, you know, you have a product that people love. And you need to just throw fuel on the fire by just growing it, right? So that's when you start marketing it, doing the advertising, doing guest posting, infographics, whatever it may be. But the big mistake that most people make is when they're doing the software products, they'll do the minimal viable approach, but they won't measure their product market fit. And if you don't achieve that, it's much harder to grow. Hmm. Very interesting. And... Um you know, once you have your, your your product market fit and you're you're doing testing on on your SaaS model, uh, one of the things you also talk about is increasing your lifetime value. And is that is that done through upsells or uh, increasing your retention? How? What's a, some uh, tips for increasing the lifetime value of your subscribers? The best way to increase lifetime value of customers to track what makes your happy customers happy and the canceled users unhappy. And if you figure out patterns that the happy users are doing that makes them stay longer, you need to try to get all, every user down that same funnel, down that same path, which makes them more engaged. And then you can figure out triggers that help, whether it's sending emails so if they don't log in or sending emails if they didn't do a specific task and you know they need help. Or it could be uh, changing the first user experience so that way it's easy to use or understand so that way more people are satisfied. But it really comes down to figuring out what makes users happy and what makes them cancel. And if you can figure out what that, then you can try to get more people to be your ideal customer. Awesome. Uh, we can, uh, I know you're, you're, you're a busy man, so we can, uh, I won't keep you very much longer. A couple of things I just want to ask you is who's doing some in, very innovative stuff in internet marketing these days and really what gets you pumped? You know, what keeps you, keeps you motivated seeing people doing great things in the space? Yeah, so uh, HubSpot did well with the free tool. Moz did well with the free tool as well. Uh, Moz did well with the guide. They've done some cool stuff. Let's see. Oatmeal has been doing a lot of unique stuff from Intermarket. I think he's one of the co-founders of Moz. And uh, Matthew Inman, who runs that site, he just creates comics. And it's very unique comics, quizzes, and they go viral. But it's just all about being creative. You don't have to be the best marketer out there. You just have to be creative. And I think that's what really helps great people. But I don't see too many people, especially in the online marketing space these days, really trying to push the envelope. It's hard, right? It's not simple. Like, even me, I look at everything I'm doing, I'm like, what's next that could be bigger? It's not like a light bulb comes up and I'm like, ah, I need to do this now, right? It's really hard to figure out what to do that's going to be the next big thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you, you test all these different things, popovers, layovers, lead generation, uh, white papers. I mean, there's only so much stuff you can do. I guess it's, it's finding your niche and then, you know, writing that momentum. Uh, that actually brings me to, to, a, a, a probably a closing question is how important is momentum and, you know, building your tribe and then, you know, getting, you know, following that path of, of, of momentum. Have you seen that in, in your content creation schedule? Uh, people uh, getting your guides and then and then tweeting about you and is there a dip after that happens? Typically not. Um, well, there is always a dip because when you announce stuff, it's going to be a huge launch and then a dip, right? So that's when you get a dip, but you still maintain some sort of momentum after the dip. But if you lay off the gas pedal and you don't keep going your traffic will grow and it'll be, it'll go down. But then when it goes down, it'll be so higher than where it started. 
Well, what's going to happen is if you push the gas pedal up, you're going to go up and then down and then up and you're going to keep climbing. And next thing you know, you're getting a ton of traffic. So if you can keep the momentum going, it's much more powerful. Yeah. I did want to let you know that I just released a free course all about my top e-commerce optimization strategies for your small business website. Whether you're using Shopify, e-commerce, Magento, Volusion, whatever hosted e-commerce platform you're using or even custom, I have some strategies to give away for you for free. I, I love helping more businesses make more money. So if you want to get this free course, all you have to do is visit the website alexdesigns.com slash free course. Go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think about it.